Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and what I want to show you here is a real-world architectural diagram. I created this a while ago. This is a previous version of the um, Exam Pro, or technically Teacher Seat platform, uh, that powers the learning experience uh, for my class certifications. And so I'm hoping that by giving you some exposure, you'll absorb some information here, uh, and that will carry through to really help you cement what these services do and how they work together. Um, now, you might be asking, how did I make this? Well, I'm in Adobe XD. It's by Photoshop, or sorry, Adobe. It's free to download, but there's a lot of options out there. And But the first thing you'll need is those AWS architectural icons. So these are free on AWS. You can download them in PowerPoint, download them as assets as SVGs and PNGs, which is what I have done and start using them in your um, at, uh, whatever software you like. There's also third-party providers out there. So like there's Lucid Charts. I love Lucid Charts, but I don't use it to make architectural diagrams uh, for AWS. Um, but you know you can drag drop and stuff and they already have the library there. And there's a bunch of them that you can choose from. So uh, you know that's interesting, but let's take a look at one that we can download. Maybe everyone's familiar with PowerPoint. So here is the AWS architectural icons. And the reason I'm showing you this is not because it just contains icons, but it also suggests how you should build them. So if I go through here, they'll give you a definition of those system elements, uh, how they would look like here. So we have our group icons or layer group our service icons, resource icons, where they should go. Uh, and then they have some interesting guidelines of like do's and don'ts. So here's like a simple example of a Git to an S3 bucket. Um, here's an example of using VPC subnets and things like that on the inside. Um, and then you can see kind of like all the groups that we have. And then it'll show all like the, uh, the um, arrows. It's a big faux pas to make uh, diagonal arrows. That's just something that AWS defined, but you'll see a lot of people do them anyway. And then you'll see all the icons. So do you have to make them like AWS suggests? No, but you know, if, if you like the way they look, that is fine. Everyone just does whatever they want, honestly. So anyway, now that we've seen, you know, how we can go get the resources to make our own, I have Adobe XD open up here. And so I just kind of want to walk you through what's going on here. So again, I said this is a, a traditional um, uh, architecture, meaning that it's powered by virtual machines. And so what we need to look for uh, is EC2, because that's where it's going to start. That's our virtual machine. And you'll notice we have one here. So there's a T2 um, uh, that's running over here. And then over here, we have a T2. Okay, so uh, we have a blue and a green environment. So this is our running environment. So I'm just going to zoom on in here. Okay, so the web app would be running on this. And um, and then on the outside here, we have an auto scaling group. And so auto scaling groups allow us to um, manage a group of EC2 instances, and they will automatically scale if the demand increases or, de or, or declines. So if this machine can't handle it, it will just automatically provision a new one. And so I've contained it in this environment here because I'm representing a blue green deploy, meaning that when I deploy, this will get this will be the environment that replaces things. And so you can see I have a lot of lines being drawn around here. So um, over here, we have uh, um, parameter store. So parameter store is a place where we can store our environment variables um, or application configuration variables. And so I have this line going here, and it's just saying we're going to take these environment variables and put them into the application, okay? Uh, and then there's also uh, the database credentials. So here we are using Postgres over here. So and then we need the database credentials. So we're grabbing those database credentials. Those are stored in Secrets Manager and we're giving to the application. So the app knows how to connect to the database and this one knows how to co uh, configure it, okay? Then we have um, a bunch of uh, buckets here for different organizations. And so, you know, S3 is for storage. So this is a way we're going to um, store a variety of things. So like user data, assets, artifacts, cloud formation templates. So some of this is for the app, some of them is for the infrastructure. So that's one thing there. Okay, then over here we have uh, a CI CD pipeline. So we have code pipeline. And so code pipeline is triggered by GitHub. So we put our code in GitHub. And when that happens, it's going to do a code build. So that's going to build out a server. Um, and then from there, it's going to run another code build server. And then from there, it's going to then um, uh, uh, use code deploy. And so code deploy is going to trigger a deploy. What it will do is create a new environment. So it's going to create a copy of this. Um, sorry, it's going to create a copy. This is actually the environment that's running. So we'll copy that and that will be our new environment, right? Okay. And so when the deploy is done, it will swap and then that environment will become this new one. Um, and so, you know, again, this is actually really the, the running server. It's just kind of easy to get hung up on this one. 
But the idea here is that, um, you know, that's how deployment works. But let's say, uh, you know, we want to get uh, traffic to this actual instance. This is going to come through the internet. And the internet's going to probably go to ref 3 So ref 3 is used for domain names. So this would be like exampro.co, teacherseat.com. We pass that over to our Elastic Load Balancer, which in this case is an application load balancer. That's why it's called ALB. And that's going to distribute the traffic there. If we wanted to run the server in another... Um, in another availability zone so that we make it highly available. Um, you know, ALB, the Elastic Load Balancer, Application Load Balancer, is going to uh, have some traffic go here and some traffic go there. So this is just uh, the blue environment or whichever the current environment is over here. Now, when we want to deploy new versions, we're going to use launch templates. And launch templates um, uh, are necessary when using auto-scaling groups. So, um, you know, you do have to define launch template. It just says, like, what is the shape of this instance type? Like, what's this family? What should it be? And then we need an Amazon machine image. So our Amazon machine image is custom built because we are installing all the stuff that we want on it. And so in order to automate that process, we are using um, SSM automation documents. So SSM stands for Systems Manager and automation allows you to automate that step. So what it's gonna do is launch an instance, install Ruby, install Postgres, download the code base. Then it's gonna create that AMI and then, um, it will do a bunch of other stuff here as well. And this is gonna run weekly, or actually at the time uh, it was running nightly, so we're doing nightly builds so that we would always get the latest um, updates to our server. Um, because it's a virtual machine, there could always be uh, new updates for that Linux version or Amazon uh, machine Linux version we were using. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. So, you know, um, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of, like the complexity of it. And, you know, this is how I like to make my architectural diagrams very in detail so that we can um, uh, look at them. But yeah, if that was too much, that is fine. But, you know, that's just the complexity of it. If you build your own, you'll start to really grasp this stuff pretty well, okay?